deep ethics and deep values motivate uh, that which has meaning for us that will ignite courage that we will take a stand no matter what. And along the way, the important stranger, there are many important strangers that ignite what it is that are our positive gifts and talents. And there are many important strangers that ignite, ooh, I don't want to be like that, <laughs> ignite our shadow. Um, but every stranger, every stranger is original medicine, as we discussed yesterday. And Rumi says, if I see you, I will laugh out loud or fall silent or explode into a thousand pieces. And if I don't, I will be caught in the cement and stone of my own prison. If I see you, I will laugh out loud with delight. <gasps> Something there that I really like, that I resonate to, or I'll fall silent because I've been so deeply touched and moved, or I'll explode into a thousand pieces because I've been so stretched and turned inside out and have had to look again at all my belief systems and stuck places and all of that. And if I don't, I will be caught in the cement and stone of my own prison into my own control patterns or mechanisms or stuck places. Uh, and so, Every indigenous culture has what are called mirrors. They believe that every person is a mirror of some aspect of my own nature, a part that's knowable, a part that's unknowable, a part that I resonate to, a part of myself that I dislike, but we all function as mirrors for each other. And so often you'll find in ceremonial headdresses or ceremonial vests or ceremonial pant legs is that they'll be sewn in tiny little pieces of tin or glass to reflect back, which is a reminder that we are all mirrors for each other and that I'm learning from you about a different aspect of myself. And there are three types of mirrors cross-culturally that uh, and the Western term for mirror is projection. The good news about a projection is it's a part of myself that's out of the bag that is on its way home. It's out of the bag and I don't know quite what to do with it so I look around for a perfect fit to carry it for a while so I can look at it out there <laughs> before I can bring it home. So stage one of every projection, stage one of every projection is some part of myself is out of the bag. Whether it's a positive aspect of myself, let's say that my leadership, you know, I haven't believed that I have leadership skills. Let's say my leadership has popped out of the bag finally, or that my beauty or attractiveness has popped out of the bag, or my anger that I've repressed, and heaven forbid that I'd ever be angry, like that person over there that's just out of control. <laughs> so my anger's out of the bag, but it's too scary to bring it home yet, but it's out of the bag. So I look around and I find the perfect fit for my leadership. Oh, I hope I could lead like that. I look around and think, oh my God, I'd have to have 14 plastic surgeries before I could ever look like that. Uh, my beauty is out of the bag. Or my anger. Oh, that person is really hostile. Mm, I don't want to. Uh, my anger is out of the bag. But I find the perfect fit. So pretty soon I look around the second stage of a projection after I found the perfect fit. The second stage is the projection begins to slip, but I don't want it to slip. So I put it back up. For example, the person that I have my leadership on, well, I couldn't, I wouldn't have handled that meeting that way. I mean, you know, that, that was a little off. And then I, th I think to myself, well, but that's, you know, I really admire them in this and this and this, but I 
slip it back up. I say, well, everybody has an off day. <laughs> Everyone has an off day, so I slip it back up. Or the object of my beauty or attractiveness, you know, they're so beautiful and together and all of this, uh, that I notice that there's a se safety pin that's on the hem of the skirt. <laughs> and I notice that the fingernail polish is a little chipped. And I notice that she didn't wash her hair, really. And, but then I can't stand that it's slipping off, so I put it back up as quick as I can. So everybody, you know, I know what it's like to travel and have so many commitments. And, put it right back up. And Mr. Hostel, you know, actually smiled and laughed out loud, and I think, or Miss, you know, uh, uh, aggressive, you know, actually smiled and looked soft, and I think, oh, well, you know, that was just a fluke. Put it back up. Third stage of a projection, or of the mirror, is that I can't rationalize it. It actually falls off. And there is no way I can rationalize it. No way in the world I can rationalize it. And so what I, what I do is two things. I'll either look around for somebody else to put it on, or I'll build a case and tell everybody, you know, be careful, you know, they're, they're not what they seem. You know, they're really not. So I, I build a case. Uh, and the third thing that I have a choice to do if I don't pick up and put it on someone else, and many of us do what I call the waltz, one, two, three, is that we go through the first three steps of projections over and over and over again. We find different fits, different fits until it's comfortable enough for us to come home. But then, Stage three, I either build a case, find another fit, or I just leave it there, just leave it there, and I don't pick it up. And I think, oh, maybe this is really my material. <laughs> it kind of dawns on me, which delivers me into stage four which is a stage of grief, recognizing that that part of myself has been away for a long time. And yes, it was out of the bag, but I spent a couple of years doing the waltz, one, two, three, finding different people to stick it on, before I finally got tired of picking it up and sticking it on someone else, and stopped building a case, and justifying and defending, and all of that, and thought, oh, maybe this is my material. You know, maybe it's time for me to own my own leadership without projecting it onto other people and to own my own authority. Maybe it's time for me to befriend and own the fact that, yes, I'm very angry about certain things in my life. And, and, um, and what am I going to do about that? Maybe it's time for me to really a look at the disappointments and the grudges that, and the resentments that I've been carrying that has me so aggressive and angry and how to befriend that or to do some healing work. And that all comes in stage four. I, I know it's my material and I begin to work with it. And stage five, which is the last, is that I incorporate um, uh, that it, I befriend it to such a, a degree that, you know, yes, uh, there's a part of me that gets disappointed, but I'm handling it differently now. I'm not getting so angry, and there's parts of me that are really vulnerable that I don't hide that vulnerability with anger. Oh, there's, you know, I'm really comfortable. I just really didn't realize that I had, that I loved um, being a, a leader and, and creating conditions where people could learn and grow, and, and I, I really like that. Or, you know, um, I, I am an attractive person. You know, I'm, I'm not overly attractive, but I'm certainly not ugly either. You know, so I be, befriend my own aesthetic and my own <laughs> beauty and my own sensuality and, 
and sexuality and my uncomfortability with my, my body image and, and also uh, more holistic in embracing all the parts of who I am. And those are the five stages of projection. Now, I just quickly want to go through just the three types of mirrors that we face all the time. And for you to take a look in this collective, who have, who's provided that mirroring uh, uh, for you as well? Uh, and to notice um, a clear mirror, a, a, and mirrors always have charge. Uh, in the last stage of a projection, I no longer have a charge. Uh, you know, I have incorporated that gift, and I, I don't no longer inflate or deflate myself. I no longer make it a problem or an issue. I, I recognize this is a part of myself, and I've befriended it, and it's a gift that I've befriended, and I don't inflate it or deflate it. And stage five is where there's no charge. There's no charge at all. I don't inflate or deflate. I'm, I'm at home. I'm comfortable with myself, warts and all. You know, it's, you know, yeah, this is a part of me that's still undeveloped, and this is a part of me that sometimes I get ignited, but, um, you know, I'm, uh, I'm more at choice. So the first kind of mirror is what's called a clear mirror, and a clear mirror has charge. And this is uh, uh, someone that I admire and respect, and, and uh, is somebody that I, I want to learn from and grow from. They have wonderful communication gifts, and they have a great sense of humor, and and you know, and and they know they're very creative, and they're always coming up with so solutions. And the good news is, if I can see it, I have it in myself. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to see it. If I see it, I have it in myself. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to see it. But it hasn't been amplified or developed to the degree of what I'm seeing. And so it's a lot of charge. And you always know when you have a clear mirror in your life because they capture your imagination. You wonder about them. You know, so who have I wondered about when I've been here this week, you know, and what their life is like and, uh, you know, that I'd like to get to know because I see something in them that I really like and that I really resonate to. That's a clear mirror. The second type of mirror is what's called a smoking mirror. A smoking mirror. And there are three kinds of smoking mirrors. You know, I came in on the first day and I looked across the room and I thought, oh my God. He's a dead ringer for my ex-husband. <laughs> or, oh my God, there's my ex-wife, just the way she turned her head and did her, this hand thing. It's my ex-wife. Or, oh my God, there's my ex-employer, you know. And it's unfinished business that we walk into that we want to avoid. We don't see the person because they remind us of unfinished business. Or, you know, that person has talked four times today. I'm so sick of there being an air hog. <laughs> you know, it's like, give me a break, you know. Uh, it's, it's like a smoke, old business that reminds me of, of how I could never get my point of view across in my family because my older brother or older sibling, sister, you know, is always flaunting their knowledge or always taking up space. So a smoking mirror can be somebody who reminds me of unfinished business and to give gratitude. Oh, I still have some work to do around the ex-wife. I still have some work to do around the ex-husband. Still have work to do around sibling things. Isn't it interesting? I can't even see this person without seeing this other person. So that's the first kind of smoking mirror. The second kind of smoking mirror is somebody that I look across the room or I hear them speak or I looked at their the cover of their black book, you know, and all their images, and, and they ignite my competition in comparison. Like, hmm, hmm, hmm. 
hmm. Hmm. And I find myself when they talk, you know, I'm going to follow afterwards. You know, kind of one up the ante a little bit, you know. So it's always interesting to see who or what in any collective ignites my competition or comparison. Because it shows me that I have self-respect and self-esteem and self-value and self-trust work to do. And to thank them that, you know, uh, to thank them silently. Oh, you ignited something that hasn't been ignited for a long time. You know, I thought, ooh, I'd work through all of that. I've come in more into my self-sufficiency. And then the, the last kind of smoking mirror is, who has ignited my Congo line of judgments? <laughs> you know, one, two, three, kick. One, two, three, kick, you know, it's like, I'm silently assessing very critically. And bless those who ignite our judgmentalness and criticality and our assessment of how they're doing or not doing and, and that we're just on their case. Just on their case. They can never do it right. They can never do it right. And I'm very critically silent, silently critical and sometimes it leaks out and I have a a zinger that goes across the room, you know, that can, and then I can say, oh, I was just teasing, <laughs> you know, but um, it, shows, it shows me where I have compassion work to do and to give gratitude. Oh, boy, I, did, I, I thought I've done a lot of work on my own criticality and judgmentalness, but Oh, I've, I've got some compassion work to do here, and can I look again at this person? So the three kinds of smoking mirrors, unfinished business, who ignites my competition and comparison, who ignites my judgmentalness or criticality or assessment. And the last kind of mirror is what's called the split mirror, the split mirror. And there are two kinds of split mirrors. And the split mirror is, oh, you really, are you really like someone and you really admire them and you walk up to them and you lose your power and you get all shy and awkward and you know you think you have four heads and you, you know uh, you just can't relax and be yourself and usually we do that around authority figures or people that we admire that we kind of have this you, you want to have more of a relationship with them, but it's like looking back to see if they like me as much as I like them kind of thing. And so that's with authority figures, and it, it often uh, shows me where I'm, I'm needing to come into my own authority as, as well, or to hold my power uh, in the, uh, when I respect or admire uh, or really like other people. And the second kind of split mirror is the one that we're most, it's hard for us to handle, <laughs> for all of us, regardless of any age that we are, and especially after pubescence, even to our 80s uh, and 90s or 100s. And this is a split mirror where I'm actually attracted to someone. You know when we're attracted to someone, right? We know when we're really attracted to someone, right? Right. And sometimes when we're really attracted to someone, we don't go in straight around our attraction. Instead, we say, oh, we, we go in kind of sheep's clothing. <laughs> go, oh, I understand that you're in organizational development work. <laughs> 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 you know, <laughs> you know, and I just thought, you know, I, we have so much that we could share and talk about. <sighs> you know, we don't go in straight, you know, we go in, you know, with this kind of sideways uh, approach. Uh, and, uh, and yet, when somebody does go in straight, as someone says, you know, I, I, I find you very attractive, and I find that it's getting in the way of me exploring really a genuine friendship. 
And I also know that you happen to be married, and I don't want to intrude on that. So uh, there's a recognition, and it can fall away. But most of us have difficulty handling the secondary split mirror of our attractions openly and honestly. And we often go in sideways or crooked rather than say, you know, I, I just really uh, find you attractive both inside and out, but also out. <laughs> Uh, so those are the three kinds of mirrors. And so who's functioned for you as you've been here? Who's, who has ignited your clear mirror, has shown you gifts and talents that you have and uh, that you'd like to develop even more? Who you wonder about? Uh, that's a clear mirror. And the three kinds of smoking mirrors and, and then uh, the two kinds of split mirrors. Uh, and they're happening all the time. And what's exciting is that there are parts of ourselves that are out of the bag on the way home. That's the good news. And then you have the five stages of projections. And you know that you're in a neutral place, in a neutral place on all of the mirrors and all of the stages of projection when Rumi says, out beyond ideas of wrongdoing and right doing, there's a field. I'll meet you there. And that's where we've come to meet each other in our self-respect, our self-value, and our self-trust is out beyond ideas of wrongdoing or right doing or out beyond inflation and deflation. There's a field. I'll meet you there. And that's where I'm at home. I'm at home. And so what, what in the return in this particular collective that will never have the same combination again has been exactly the right medicine that I've needed for me at this time in my journey? And touching upon what Larry said about subversive orthodoxy, you know, is, is really getting in touch with our deepest original medicine and remembering that we have an original imprint, we have an original voice sonic, and we have a, an original way of seeing the color and texture of our eyes. And so um, uh, there's a lot more that's happened here than we recognize, but when we come conscious to it, Every grouping and every collective uh, is a mirror to show us where we are and where we're not, shows us the work we've done, the work we haven't done, and the work that we need to do. And um, I just really feel so honored um, every time that I come into any grouping of people because it's such an extraordinary opportunity to meet the mystery of who we all are internally, individually, relationally, and collectively. <laughs>